Hello everyone, my name is Anuj. I'm a second year MBBS student at GMC Nagpur, awaiting to go into third year, but my exams are postponed sadly. Anyways, here in this video, I'll talk about how I learned two times faster without taking any sort of notes. So, without any further ado, let's just dive on into the book. So, let's say you're presented with this chapter from internal medicine called as pain. Alright, if you're a 12 standard student, don't worry, just take out any 12 standard chapter that you've got. And yeah, this is pain, uh, pathophysiology, and management. So, if I was a student, let's say three years or four years back, what I would do is that I would just go ahead read this chapter you know and while reading let's say i wanted to know about the sensitization i you know read the topic i liked it what i would do is that i would just put a highlighter to it and that so now what i do is something different after i'm done reading this chapter thoroughly when everything that that book is trying to tell me is into my head what i do is that i take a break for five ten minutes come back sit and open something called as a google doc so if you don't know google doc is just imagine it like a microsoft word but it is provided by google and it is available online so uh, i'll just open up google docs you can see so you can see over here the title is pain and harrison is the textbook from which i'm going to write the questions so the technique here is pretty simple pretty straightforward i'm just going to write the questions from this chapter so i've, I've added the pdf of the chapter as well as this uh, notes as well so you can judge what amount of questions you need to make from each and every single chapter that you read so from this pain chapter i ended up making 40 questions all right now these questions are from different paragraphs from different lines which i felt like i should highlight so instead of highlighting that one important line highlighting that one important particular drug which was given i have just converted that into a question now this question gives me an incomplete information let's say uh, i read this question the ability to detect painful stimuli from your body can be removed by removing which fibers this is an incomplete question i know from this question that the ability to detect painful stimuli can be removed and in harrison it is mentioned that if you remove like the a delta and the c fibers uh, this thing could be removed now this incomplete information which you, your brain is presented with your brain tries to complete this information as soon as it can and it tries to pull all your memory banks into this answering this one single question you will remember physiology pathology medicine pharmacology everything just to answer this one particular question and guess what is that going to do with your brain it is going to strengthen that pathway from which you can take all the information in your head and put it out effectively and that is what examiners want us to do if you are presented with a question examiners want us to recollect that information to you know remember that information and be able to present it what our traditional note taking system does is that guys it allows you to take the notes it makes you feel like you're actually studying a lot but in the end even after you have taken the notes after two or three days you will forget that topic that's it the notes you're going to reread the notes you're going to forget them again the way to get out to break this loop is actually try to recollect all the information that we have learned this process is called as active recall you know i i was uh, you know using this subconsciously before i knew that there was a word to it right so when i was in 12th class uh, let's say i would study biology for four or five hours what i used to do is that for the first two hours of my preparation i used to just sit and study theory you know memorize everything learn everything and in the next two hours subconsciously what i used to do was that i used to solve like as many questions i used to get from one particular topic let's say that i'm studying something called as musculoskeletal system uh, chapter of class 11th and then i would uh, you know just go ahead uh, get my grb or get some other book and then solve all the like 500 600 questions from musculoskeletal and then in the next one hour i would used to recollect my mistakes and then put it on my mistake book so this was my general workflow when i was studying for 11th and 12th and subconsciously what i was doing was that i was just solving questions again and again the only notes i had in my 11th and 12th preparation were those which i actually made from going to my tuition classes and in the end i can guarantee you that i did not read my notes what i read was my mistake book which had the answers to the questions i had done wrong as well as my textbook which had everything you know highlighted which had uh, small small questions written on the side and that is what actually helped me the notes they did not help me they they might have helped me get the concept into my head but after that concept is in your head if you are not able to recollect that concept what is the meaning of taking notes at all so in the past two years i came across uh, all of these things related to productivity and this thing called as active recall which is popularized by a very handsome man dr ali abdal you might have seen on his channel but in this video i'll just demonstrate to you what is the practicality of all this that was a side talk anyways uh, let us look at what are the different questions i made from different paragraphs so what i will do is that i will just do this so i have a split view over here in this we can view the question in here we can do this all right so what are the different types of nerve fibers in the peripheral nerve so in this segment of the 
book you can see that it is written from over here to here that were the different nerve fibers present so there we've got a beta a alpha a delta c all of these are different types of nerve fibers you can see over here and what i've done is that instead of just making notes out of it i've just written this what are the types of nerve fibers in the peripheral nerve what this will do is that once this incomplete information is presented to me my mind will recollect everything all right the next thing is that uh, what i've written over here is what is sensitization in here you can see i've written what is sensitization and this is the answer to that sensitization in fact from every single para i've tried to incorporate one two three or four questions depending on how important that paragraph really is so there is this important paragraph about pain in modulation over here what it says is that in army people when they are you know going out for war they have so much adrenaline that they don't feel the pain whereas if i myself i'm going for something like my vaccination that small needle will scare me to that so this is pain modulation that different people feel different amount of pain this is a very important topic i feel so what i've done is that from this pain modulation chapter i've added a bunch of questions like what is the pathophysiology of this pain modulation what is allodynia etc so this the the more important the topic is the more amount of questions i'm making in here in here i have not mentioned the answers so let's say if you're just on a bus you, you can't be on a bus man it's a pandemic going on let's say if you are downstairs and your books are upstairs everything is upstairs all you have is your phone so in your phone when you pick it up and you open this google doc and then you are reading this question what are the neurotransmitters that are released in spinal cord in transmission of pain stimuli now now yesterday i read it now i know that the answer is glutamate right so this answer i know but what if i don't know this answer what will i do next so at this point i would be actively searching for the answer in google or let's say on this book itself what this will do is that once i google something i will find 10 more information related to it so that i will not only increase my level of you know information here but also in some parallel topics which are equally important as to this one and uh, what you can do over here is that something which you think you will definitely most definitely forget is what you can do is add a comment so you can see this analgesia thing it is feeling like it's highlighted by some orange yellow highlighter if i click it uh, what what i will get is you can see i've added a comment and this is the answer to this particular question so here i've written what are the recent drugs used for treating the opioid side effects without affecting the analgesia so i i've selected this part and i would just add a comment so when i'm adding a comment i can type anything like hi hola subscribe to the channel right so this comment could be added and what is happening is that once i've added this comment i've ticked this off next time i'm reading this textbook reading this question so that my entire chapter could get over i could just click this part and it would open up this comment section and i would see the answer right here so for those important questions which you think you will forget add the comments and for most of the things don't add the comment the number of questions that you need to make should be limited because you should not be mem memorizing non important things so first of all just read the chapter analyze yourself that which things are important which things are not only then go ahead with your making questions and then once you are making the questions it's just another revision to you so that you are reviewing everything uh, and you know since you have read it once the second time that you're going to be reading it it's going to be just phenomenally great for you so this was an example of what i do currently let us take let let me take you back like uh, the things i have made for my microbiology pathology for second year so let's say i want to study such as vibro vibro is a microorganism that causes cholera you can see i've pulled up a doc here a uh, vibro pseudomonas hemophilus brucella if i click this doc what you can see over is that it's got all the different questions from vibro so let's say i want to ask about what a how do we class classify the vibro on the basis of salt so there are different types of halophilic vibros and non halophilic vibros etc and then we have draw flow chart of the gv classification so it is the one which is used for vibro so like you can you can imagine like if i practice this questions daily an entire chapter could be done by me in very less duration so another very benefit of this beautiful technique is that guys um, since you do not need to reread the chapter first of all you will not fall asleep let's say i have read one big chapter of pain and then i have somebody tells me to read that chapter once again what is going to happen is that sometime while reading that chapter i'm going to feel sleepy and it is a very common thing nobody talks about it but that's going to definitely happen but with this technique what will happen is that you won't feel asleep why because you're actively answering all the different questions so something like bacteriology which might be sleepy for some people becomes very very interesting to me the reason is because of these question let us say what are the factors promoting the transmission of cholera so 
I could just enlist all of those factors and yeah you know that's that's basically how it works and it will take me around uh, you know 15 20 minutes to answer all of this question and in that 15 20 minutes I have memorized I have read this particular vibro part um, com completely from a textbook you can imagine this technique will really really help you once you're going into for something sort of an MCQ examination but if you're going for something very purely theory based where just there is memorization vomiting going on in that particular scenario notes would help so let me just tell you about notes as well. all right so talking about what you should do once you are in your theory examination this is one of my great friend Abhijit's notes he is one of the toppers in our university so you can see that he's actually screenshotted different uh, books and he's just underlined everything highlighted everything so that when the question appears like, like what is the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis it is mentioned over here so you can write a short note by just rem remembering all of these things but this pathogenesis of atherosclerosis is not going to be very useful for you once you are in your PG preparation or preparation for some MCQs in preparation for MCQs what they will ask you is that what are foam cells where are they found what is the composition of this atherosclerotic plague all of these are present except so all the you know PG preparation questions are going to be uh, from your questions which you made in the first place right so this is the sort of notes which you should be making if you want to study for uh, your university examinations which will focus much more on just theory basis I did not believe that uh, making questions would actually help me unless and until I started doing it if you couple this technique along with something called as a mistake book let me just tell you what a mistake book is let me just pull up my mistake book this is my mistake book what has it got so let us start from the top it is kind of big because I do a lot of mistakes what is this mistake book concept in the first place? So guys, this concept basically revolves around recording all your mistakes, documenting it so that whenever the next time you're faced with a similar question or the same question, you will not make the same mistakes again. So let's say that I'm solving marrow modules for, you know, marrow question banks for after I've read something or I've seen some video lecture. I will definitely do a lot of questions wrong because this is the first time that I'm solving those questions. I do not know what is what and I will make a lot of mistakes. What is more important is that those mistakes shall never be repeated. So here you can see on the screen that I have got my mistake book and I have added all the different mistakes that I have did like this is very this is the very first page over here. So I made a mistake about which is the lung cancer which is most common. The answer is adenocarcinoma as you can see over here right I am marked something like small cell carcinoma so that was a mistake on my part what I did was immediately I screenshotted the the question bank you can screenshot the question bank it's it's legal you can do that you cannot record or screenshot the videos that is illegal so I screenshotted the question bank from marrow and then just imported it into this good notes document and then what I did was that most common variant of CA lung is adeno as simple as that that was the first day I started recording my mistakes uh, for this next preparation that is and then I've got all of these different notes all of these important points which I should not forget and what this will do is that I will read this points before I go into my examination so all of these are the mistakes I made at some point and guess what next time the these same questions repeat to me I'm pretty sure I will not make the same mistakes again so couple your uh, question making techniques along with your mistake book so you might feel that this guy has his iPad is doing on his stuff etc let me just demonstrate to you how you can do it do this question making thing on your phone so I've got my phone all right this is Google Docs it would just open up on your phone next I would go at new document let us uh, name this new document as test instead of typing what I usually prefer is voice over narration so here let us say that we are talking my youtube channel so the questions would be uh, what kind of videos does Anuj Pachel make so here he's got my uh, name wrong but that does not matter subscribing to Anuj Pachel gives you what right next thing is that how is he so handsome so all of these are different questions which you can make on your phone I did not type a single word all I did was that I spoke so even if you've got just your phone just your just your earphones to use mic you can use this technique most effectively so yeah and if you are going to be doing this on your laptop on your computer uh, the process is as, as simple as that just go open Google Docs do it so if you're a student who has not tried this technique till now what I request to you is that guys today itself whatever chapter you're reading after reading it uh, just open up Google Docs on your phone, on this iPad, on anything and then just type out all the different things that you want to type out. Alright, so that's the beauty of it. This technique which I've told you will possibly, most probably change your life. So why not just hit the thumbs up button on this video and share this video with as many friends as you can because it really helps me out. With that being said, 
please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already stay safe stay healthy and stay happy until next time this is anush patel i will see you soon